Welcome to the MPL Goal Show, the show where we bring you all the action from across the Northern Premier League. We start at Ashton United, who look to make it three wins in a row at home to Prescott Cables. The visitors broke the deadlock with just over 30 minutes gone, however, as Ben Elliott hooked home his first goal since the middle of August. It got even better for Cables before half-time, James Foley calmly slotting home from the penalty spot. Foley wasn't done there either, scoring again from 12 yards out to wrap up a convincing win in second half stoppage time. Next up are unbeaten league leaders Macclesfield, who travelled to Baseford United looking for their 8th win of the season in the league. They opened the scoring inside 5 minutes in this one, Damani Mella taking advantage of an under-hit back pass to roll the ball into an empty net. Baseford had scored 3 goals in each of their last 2 games, and they levelled the scores on 34 minutes courtesy of Jordan Hallam. Macclesfield have started the season in fine form though, and this close range header from Paul Dawson restored their advantage. John Rooney was next on the score sheet with this, a delightful finish from outside the penalty area. Nine minutes later, Lewis Fenton made it a quick fire treble for the Silkman, who took control heading into the final quarter. And there was even time for Eddie Mayako to wrap up a five star performance in stoppage time. On to Broadhurst Park, where FC United of Manchester were looking to end a 10 game winless run in all competitions. They hosted bottom of the table Matlock Town, who enjoyed a dream start in Greater Manchester, Josh Smith breaking the deadlock on the half hour. Adam LaFondra scored the only goal for FC United in their most recent win on the opening day, and their top scorer was again the man to come to the fore and rescue a point for his side. Yeah! Gainsborough Trinity were beaten 3-0 by Baseford United last time out, and the visit of Stockton Town gave them the opportunity to put things right. This defensive howler from the visitors allowed Declan Howe to fire his side ahead before half-time. Stockton host Chester in the next round of the FA Cup will have enjoyed a much more difficult run on the league front. However, this sensational effort from Lewis Leach ensured they wouldn't return home empty-handed. The points shared in Lincolnshire. Next up, a clash between high-flying Geisley and works up town, with commentary coming from the home side. After the... Uh the spate of yellow cards on 20 minutes you'd think there'd have to be about five minutes to be added now Brommel's in he's into the area Brommel takes the shot first time and Brommel puts it away and from back to front it's a goal there's a push in the back on Ben Sharif <laughs> nothing doing I think that was Farrell maybe just well there was no need to push him in the back it drops to fall ledge of the air yeah! and Leo Wins a good challenge up against Redford and plays a ball down the left looking for Ackroyd. And Malkowski is <laughs> so far out of his goal, it's unbelievable. And yet again, he's won it and he's got there first. Now Hutchinson comes forward, he hurdles the challenge from Farrell who tried to clip his heels. A little bit naughty that from Farrell, but it was needed to stop the counter attack. But works up keep coming, the cross comes in and it's towards a works up head. And on 81 minutes, it's Geisley 1, works up town. Two. Hebburn Town were heavily beaten 6-2 by Whitby Town in midweek and were keen to put things right against unbeaten Lancaster City. The opening goal came on the stroke of half-time, Amar Pior while heading home his sixth of the season. <laughs> Lancaster came into the weekend unbeaten in the league, although six of those nine games ended level. Another draw looked on the cards when Charlie Bailey struck on 54 minutes. But 
high-flying Heber started the season strongly, and this 82nd-minute winner from Jack Donaghy consigned Lancaster to their first league defeat of the season. On to Harrison Park, where League Town were looking to escape the bottom four with victory over Ilkeston Town. It was the visitors who drew first blood though, Jordan Stevens' free kick somehow finding a way through. The response was swift and Leek restored parity before the half hour. A low cross not dealt with and Diego Edwards turned the ball home. The goals of Tom Kersons have played a major role in Ilkeston's start of the season. This finish, a delightful dink over the keeper, saw them retake the lead. And so the task of wrapping up the win fell to Lavarne Brandy, who duly obliged with his second goal of the season. A big win for the Robins, who climbed to seven. The Blythe Spartans picked up their second league win of the season in midweek, and next up for them was a trip to Mickelova. The thoughts of picking up another three points here were dealt to blow inside ten minutes, as Stuart Bevan fired home. Before half-time, the home side doubled their lead through Dylan Edwards, who picked the pocket of his defender and had the finish to match. Shortly after half-time, it was three. Marcus Barnes next to add his name to the score sheet. And Mikelova had a force in the closing stages. Jarvan and Davidson Miller coming off the bench to wrap up a comprehensive win for the hosts. At Craig Park, there was plenty of second half excitement as Morpeth Town hosted Inform Heights United. The opening goal came eight minutes after half time. Jack Fall with a fine header. The visitors came into this one looking for a first league win in four, and Jack Redshaw's header ensured their response was swift. Turnaround complete with 20 to go, Redshaw turning provider for Connor Heath to roll the ball home. Or so it seemed. In the 97th minute, Danny Barlow scored a dramatic equaliser, the point shared in Northumberland, and Hyde still just outside the top five. Warrington Rylands have endured a tough start to the season, and next up for the Blues was a clash with Bamber Bridge. The visitors struck first at the Hive Arena, Lewis Hay rifling the ball home. Four minutes later, and their lead was 2-0, Jack Baxter doing just enough to squeeze his shot past goalkeeper Luke Pilly. The home side pulled one back through James Neal before the hour mark, but it would prove to be a mere consolation. Yeah. The final game of the round came between Workington and Whitby Town. The host took the direct approach and it paid off, David Norris opening the scoring after 11 minutes. The next goal came midway through the second half, and again it was the home side who got it. The victory was assured for the Breds deep into the closing stages, top scorer David Simmington firing home his fourth goal of the season. Whitby scored a fine consolation in stoppage time but this strike from Nathan Thomas wasn't enough to stop them from falling to a sixth league defeat in seven. 